but Team Coin needs to check out utcoinsforyou.com. There will be a link in the description, and if you use the code Chez, you can get yourself a 5% discount. Hey guys, how's it going? Tez back again with another video. Now quickly, this one is going to be more about the commentary than the gameplay. So if you want to uh, want to just change players or close the tab, minimise it or whatever, and just listen to the commentary, then of course, by all means, feel free to do so. What basically I want to go through in, uh, in this one is more of a discussion about real-life football and real-life transfers as opposed to uh, anything FIFA-orientated. Of course... Uh, it's the weekend after January transfer deadline day. There were quite a few deals went through, not necessarily any massive ones in this window just gone. Um, or if there were massive ones, it was only the odd one or two, as opposed to you know the huge influx that we can sometimes see in a, in a January transfer window. But feel free to leave a co me uh, a comment down below and let me know what transfers your particular team that you support brought in, whether you're happy with those transfers, whether you're pleased with the, uh, the additions or the... Uh, any players that may have gone out that you may have wanted to keep or you're glad to see the back of let me know let's get some sort of discussion going in the comments if we possibly can because I like to uh, I like to have some sort of real football uh, kind of talk and discussion on this channel as well as uh, you know the uh, the FIFA orientated stuff but basically I'm only really going to concentrate on the BPL and a select few uh, select few international deals that, uh, that caught my personal eye but we'll go through the Premier League to, uh, to start off with I will leave Chelsea until the end of course because I don't want to just hammer you all with, with Chelsea stuff and then before moving on to different clubs etc because of course as you know I'm a Chelsea fan but I've been waffling for a minute now we've not even said anything so Arsenal let's go through the Premier League Arsenal of course their only real transfer that uh, was of any particular note was uh, King Kalstrom coming in from Spartak Moscow obviously formerly of Olympic Lyonnais uh, it was, there was a bit of hoo-ha on Twitter earlier on on uh, Saturday afternoon there were rumours going around that he uh, had injured himself in uh, his first training session was actually going to be out for two to three months uh, fortunately for Arsenal fans that proved to be false although uh, he is actually injured uh, apparently he he came in with an injury from uh, Sparta Moscow that Arsenal knew about prior to making the deal and he should be available for selection in the next few weeks I'm um, led to believe that uh, he picked up a back injury playing uh, in a pre-season tour in Abu Dhabi playing beach football I'm not entirely too sure whether that's 100% uh, confirmed or not so if, if I am wrong then feel free to let me know in the comments uh, one other transfer that springs to mind with Arsenal is of course uh, Manuel Frimpong went out on a permanent deal to uh, to Barnsley and uh, subsequently earlier on on Saturday afternoon half an hour into his day he picked up, picked up his his, uh, his first red card of his career at Barnsley for uh, for second bookable offence in the space of about five minutes so uh, I'm sure the Barnsley fans will uh, have him endeared to their hearts straight away but uh, Aston Villa didn't really make too many moves in the transfer market to be completely honest uh, of course it would be important to them to, uh, to keep hold of uh, Christian Benteke, obviously their main asset of the club, but uh, there wasn't really too many offers going around. Uh, they were rumoured to be interested in uh, in Wesley Houlihan from Norwich, but nothing really came in from that because of uh, a little bit of hoo-ha between the clubs, with, uh, of course, Paul Lambert being the manager at Aston Villa now, having left Norwich, and uh, there was there were, they bid three times, I think, three separate times for Wesley Houlihan, and each time Norwich turned it down. There's a bit of a sour taste uh, between those two clubs right now, but uh, not really too much going on from Aston Villa, so you'll have to let me know if there are any Villa fans out there, what you think of your current squad, what you think you can aim for this season, but Cardiff City were just throwing bids about left, right, and centre, trying to get as many players in as possible, especially strikers. They threw in bids for uh, Adam Lafondre, of course, picked up two hat-tricks recently for Reading. Very, very good player. They've also been throwing bids around for uh, for other strikers in the Premier League. They actually lost a striker, Cornelius, uh, the uh, the big... Is he Danish, perhaps, Cornelius? Um, or Finnish? I'm not... My, again, my... Uh, my unfortunately my knowledge fails me but uh, I know he has left and gone back out from uh, Cardiff after not really having too much of, uh, of an influence on, uh, on the first team of course they brought in William uh, William Wilfred Zaha from Manchester United on loan and Fabio for a permanent as an undisclosed fee I'm not really too sure what that fee was but uh, two very very good signings for them Wilfred Zaha I think uh, it, I'm recording this Saturday evening you'll probably see this on Sunday but uh, I haven't obviously seen the footage from match today yet. But I think Wilfred Zaha picked up an assist for uh, one of Cardiff's goals this afternoon. So that's a fantastic way to uh, to get him off the mark for them. I don't know whether Fabio played or not. And personally, I don't really rate Fabio, but he could be good enough to help Cardiff secure their uh, their Premier League status for the uh, for the foreseeable future. But whether that actually happens or not, 
I'm not entirely too sure. Crystal Palace were trying to make some deals go through to try and keep their life in the Premier League uh, or try and secure it. And actually, Tony Pulis did some very, very good business. He's obviously uh, a great manager for keeping teams in the league. He's actually never been relegated as a manager, which is quite an impressive stat, actually. And of course, they uh, they brought, he brought Stoke up to uh, the Barclays Premier League in 2008, question mark. And uh, they've obviously gone on from, uh, from strength to strength in every season and uh, kind of become one of the teams that aren't really discussed when it comes to relegation battles at present so that's all down to him really and he's hoping I guess to uh, to maintain that sort of record at Crystal Palace and he's brought in a couple of very very good players that will help him do that Scott Dan from Blackburn is personally I think a very very good central defender and uh, I was surprised that nobody else has, uh, has picked him up since uh, since he left Birmingham and they got relegated and of course Blackburn got relegated as well so I'm surprised I am surprised it's taken so long for uh, for him to come into uh, to the Premier League picture again They've obviously got Wayne Hennessy as well the goalkeeper Welsh number one goalkeeper from uh, from Wolves uh, again a very good goalkeeper whether he's good enough to uh, to be a consistent performer and obviously Julian Speroni as well is a very good goalkeeper at Palace very consistent and he's been there for a while so uh, you know he kind of bosses that area very very well indeed so whether Hennessy will see first team football immediately I'm not too sure of course Palace have Arsenal uh, on Sunday so uh, that's going to be a big test regardless of uh, who starts in goal for uh, for them they made the uh, the loan deal for De Jason Punchin that were from Southampton they made that deal permanent which is again a very very good move and uh, of course Jason Punchin has been scoring a couple of goals recently for them as well despite that horrific penalty miss against Tottenham but uh, another team that didn't really make too many moves in uh, in the uh, in the Premier League is actually Everton. They uh, they sold uh, or a question uh, quote unquote sold Johnny Heitinger to Fulham on. He left on a free technically, but uh, Everton didn't really make any two any moves in the uh, in the transfer market apart from the uh, that goalkeeper from Sparta Prague, Jindrik Stanek. I don't know anything too much about him to be completely honest. In fact, I don't know anything about him. I'm not even going to pretend that I do. So uh, unfortunately, there's not really too much for me to uh, to comment on Everton. But they have been playing very very well so far this season. So you Everton fans will have to let me know if you think you can reach a uh, European spot by the end of the season. Fulham did have uh, a couple of deals that go through that were very very big in fact Johnny Heitinger is of course a fantastic addition at centre back and uh, they lost a player although technically it's not really lost a player in my opinion Philip Senderos has gone out to Valencia in La Liga and uh, Philip Senderos is a player that I don't particularly rate at centre back I think he's full of mistakes and uh, Percy I think Fulham will be glad to see the back of him a player they won't be glad to see the back of is Dimitar Berbatov I think that is a big loss for them you really need that sort of experience Premier League experience in a team like that battling for uh, survival and he's actually gone to Mon I'm not sure whether there was a fee involved. Um, if there was, you'll have to let me know. But uh, that's a great signing for Monaco, having lost Radamel Falcao to injury. And of course, Lucina Traore went to Everton earlier on in the window. There's an Everton uh, transfer that skipped my mind. But uh, they did replace Dimitar Berbatov, though, with a massive signing. The One of the biggest signings in the uh, in the window was a hole in the Premier League. Of course, Kostos Mitroglou came in from Olympiacos. He swapped a Champions League round 16 game or a round of 16 appearances for uh, for a relegation dogfight in the Barclays Premier League, which I think is a step down, in my opinion, even though coming to the BPL is a big move regardless. Uh, I do think that's a step down for him, but if he can single-handedly keep them up in the Premier League, then that would be... 12, 13 million pounds, very, very well spent from then indeed. Uh, Hull City, of course, brought in Shane Long, and he actually scored on his debut to uh, to help Hull get a a one all draw against Tottenham the uh, this afternoon as I'm recording this. So they'll be very pleased with the uh, the instant impact that he's brought in. They wanted to bring him in in the summer, and unfortunately, the deal didn't go through. And there was there were rumours actually that they were going to go for Nikita Yelovich, but uh, I, I don't think that went through. I think they got Shane Long instead. But uh, again, if uh, if I've got anything wrong, then you will have to uh, have to correct me. Liverpool did nothing in the window, as far as I'm aware. Uh, they tried to bring in the uh, the Ukrainian lad, whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce. So uh, and that didn't that fell through. That didn't go through. So unfortunately for them, no one coming in. Same with Manchester City. I don't think they brought anyone in either. They were obviously keen on. Uh, on Mangala and Fernando as a duo coming in from Porto, but that deal fell through, and that will probably go on, or probably will happen. I think it's 95% confirmed that that will happen in the summer, but they uh, they wanted to wait before uh, before that deal went through. Manchester United, of course, of course, Manchester United brought in Juan Mata for 37.1 million pounds. That was their only acquisition, and uh, it's a massive signing. Although that didn't help them today, as they went down 2-1 away at Stoke. So. Uh, I have to say that has pleased me. 
uh, I don't have any ill feelings towards Juan Mata. I can fully understand his uh, his want to move, and he is justified in wanting to move. I just wish he hadn't moved to that particular club. But uh, I think the less said about that, the better, before I get myself uh, in trouble. Newcastle didn't really do anything in the window either. I know a lot of fans were very, very disappointed in uh, in Mike Ashley and Alan Pardew for not bringing anyone in. And, of course, losing such a huge, huge player for them in Johan Kabay. And then, subsequently, this afternoon, they lost the Tynewear derby heavily to uh, to Sunderland. And they're, they're a club in turmoil, I think, at the minute, in my opinion. And uh, definitely need to uh, to sort themselves out in the summer because they they really do stand uh, a a good chance of not being able to get you know establish themselves as anything more than a mediocre mid table side unless they make a couple of big signings and soon in the next you know six to twelve months or so. Norwich actually didn't make too many moves in the in the transfer window either. Of course, they had the uh, the bids for Wes Houlihan that uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, unfortunately for Wes uh, didn't mean he left the club. He did actually make some sort of rather rash comment saying that Norwich City were a fucking shit club, uh, I believe was the uh, the phrase he used. But uh, he will have endeared himself to uh, to the fans there. But they actually made one signing that is of, uh, of some note. They brought in Joseph Yobo on loan. If you remember, the Nigerian centre-back uh, from Fenerbahce used to be at Everton. Uh, used to be particularly pacey. I'm not too sure what uh, what sort of stats he'll have if they bring uh, Joseph Yobo back to Ultimate Team, etc. on FIFA, because of course Fenerbahce aren't on Ultimate Team, so whether they'll bring a new card in or not, I'm not entirely too sure. They probably won't, considering they didn't do uh, anything similar for Didier Drogba last year. But uh, Southampton, they did make uh, a couple of main moves of course we've uh, we've previously mentioned Jason Punch's move to Palace became a permanent but the biggest one of course is the Danny Osvaldo or Pablo Osvaldo move back to uh, back to Serie A he's gone to Juventus after that bust up with Jose Fonte where he uh, headbutted him broke his nose and uh, kind of just ruined any chances of him settling properly in the Premier League and he's moved back to a Tesseria. The event is initially on loan, but I think the view is to uh, to a permanent deal. I think the lo- the initial loan fee was about three hundred thousand pounds, and uh, there is a view to a permanent of around about fifteen million, I believe, at the end of the season. But again, if I'm wrong, feel free to uh, feel free to correct me. Uh, Stoke City, again, not really too many uh, signings coming in or out, as far as I can remember. I'm trying to have a quick look. Through uh, through a list of transfers I've got in front of me, trying to uh, jog, jog the memory. I don't think they made anything of any particular note other than uh, Peter Rod and Wingy came in from uh, from West Brom. Obviously, wanted to get out of West Brom for a while. There was the uh, the whole kerfuffle with him going down to QPR last year or in the summer and not getting the move that he wanted, and uh, QPR just turning him away off the doorstep. But uh, he's finally got a move out of West Brom. Finds himself at Stoke. Sunderland have uh, have made a couple of uh, decent signings. The most notable of which is uh, Liam Bridcut, and of course, uh, oh, fuck sake, what's his name? Gus Poyet. I don't know how that slipped my mind, but Gus Poyet brought in Liam Bridcut from uh, from his previous club, Brighton, the holding midfielder, uh, for around about. I think it was undisclosed, but I believe the fee was between two and a half and three million pounds, and uh, it's a good signing for them actually. I uh, I do rate Liam Bridcut; he's a good player. Uh, whether he can cut it in the Premier League, I'm not too sure, but he definitely did the job for Brighton in uh, the Championship on a consistent basis, and uh, I think the plan was for. Uh, or as far as deadline day made out, the plan would have been for for him to replace the outgoing Lee Catamol to Stoke. But any particular move that uh, that would have seen Lee move from Sunderland to Stoke fell through quite early on in the day. Uh, even though they kept reporting it again and again and again on Sky Sports News, uh, Swansea haven't really done anything either. They've had a couple of players come in. Jay Fulton from Falkirk, I'll be honest, don't know much about him. Uh, Marvin Emnes from Middlesbrough on loan, the striker. He's rapid, so maybe he'll be able to do something up top. Although he's he's not that physical of a player, despite being quite fast. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what goes on there but they don't have that many fast strikers at Swansea of course you've got the big brute of Boney and Michu doesn't have that much pace either so uh, perhaps he can help add a bit of pace through the middle as opposed to having the pace out wide with Wayne Routledge and uh, and Nathan Dyer Uh, Tottenham no news there whatsoever Tottenham apart from Lewis Holtby going out on loan to uh, to Fulham Uh, West Bromwich Albion again not really too much Happened there. They bought in Tiavi. If you uh, if you are a fan of the Silvers and Ultimate Team, you'll definitely know who Tiavi is. A young Frenchman coming in from Espanyol into uh, into the Premier League. He's fast, but whether he uh, can have an instant impact in uh, in the Premier League, I'm not too sure. And uh, West Ham did actually make a couple of deals. They uh, they sold 
uh, Maiga to, uh, or I may even have been alone to QPR. I'm not entirely too sure whether that was permanent or a loan deal. But uh, they released Raz Van Rat, who's been disappointing for them so far this season. Uh, they were heavily linked with Matroglu, but of course he chose to go to Fulham over over going to West Brom, West Brom, West Ham. But uh, I think their main signing, you'd have to say, would be uh, Pablo Armero coming in from Napoli on loan. Uh, Big Sam said on, uh, on Sky Sports News it was to uh, it was more of a case of replacing players that they'd lost through injury in the game against Chelsea earlier on in the month, as opposed to uh, you know trying to build on what they've already got. So it's more of a uh, just kind of filling in slots that had emptied. So uh, it's more strengthening to stay up as opposed to um, perhaps making a push further up the league. But uh, that's everyone other than Chelsea covered. So I'm going to go into the Chelsea transfers now. Obviously, there's not really too much to speak about other than. Um, the one matter deal which we've already covered I won't go into too much detail on that uh, oh what's his face Gail Kakuta has gone out on loan to Lazio came back in from Vitesse and then gone back out again to Lazio back to, uh, to Serie A he's been in and out of the club on loan time and time again since we brought him in and of course the main signing for Chelsea in this particular transfer window was um Kurt Zuma, the centre back from Sentetti, and a lot of people, if you're a career mode orientated, will definitely know who Kurt Zuma is. But centre back with a lot of potential. We've uh, we've paid twelve million pounds, I think, for him, but he has instantly gone back out on loan to Sentetti, and as you may have expected, for uh, for a player of that age, and uh, you know he really needs first team experience, and to get that at Sentetti in a team that he's comfortable at, a team that he clearly knows very very well, then that would be uh, would be the right move for him. But uh, I think it was important for Chelsea to get a player like that on the book early doors kind of like we did with Lukaku although Lukaku has come on leaps and bounds since he signed uh, it's kind of a you know a look, looking to the future perhaps a John Terry replacement a player that is quite strong and physical so uh, we'll have to wait and see he's going to be one for the future a couple of moves from abroad that caught my eye Atletico have re-signed um, Diego from Wolfsburg of course he is uh, a very very skillful Brazilian player that used to be at Atletico a few years ago and I had a very successful spell there. He's now gone back on loan. I think it's on loan with a view to a permanent. Because, of course, uh, Wolfsburg brought in Kevin De Bruyne from Chelsea uh, for £17-18 million, pounds, I think. A player that I'm not overly too bothered about seeing the back of at Chelsea, to be completely honest. Uh, he's not set the world alight. He did very, very well in uh, his loan spell at Genk when he went back to Genk and obviously prior to uh, us actually signing him from Genk for £7 million but we made about £10 million profit on him and he never really had that too much of an impact on the first team so I have to say uh, pleased with that deal I think it's best for all parties that he gets first team football much like the uh, the Wan Matter deal and I think that's actually going to bring this video to a close it's around about 18 minutes long already if you have made it to the end then let me know that you've made it to the end and uh, just leave me a cheeky little comment or something saying boobs I don't know and then uh, of course let me know what your particular team has done in the transfer window like I say whether you're pleased with that whether you uh, you think you could have done more or whether you're disappointed with uh, with what the team you know maybe your team has brought someone in but you're disappointed with the uh, the caliber of play that they have brought in just uh, you know because we've got quite a few fans from around the world uh, or fans of teams from around the world in uh, in my sub base at the minute so it's nice to get a nice view of uh, feelings from various different corners so uh, feel free to do that and this is an extra video there will have been a video earlier on uploaded uh, today I will upload this Sunday afternoon so there will have been a, an upload earlier today which was a World Cup squads episode there will be a link to that in the bottom left hand side of your screen and we'll have all video long and uh, if you by the odd chance that you're new to this channel and you're 18 minutes into your first video on my new ta on this channel then uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button although to be fair if you're this far in I, uh, I would presume that you're subscribed already so thank you very much for watching guys leave the video a like if you want I know this isn't going to get too many views to be completely honest but you know I just wanted to put my thoughts out there regardless so uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I will see you tomorrow with uh, some more career mode